Okay. So I'm very pleased to uh, introduce the first speaker, my friend, Jason Antonick. He's a near lifelong Daytonian with a passion and zeal for life. You can find him most days making commercial loans, cooking, bird watching, throwing frisbee, playing basketball, painting murals, involved in civic duties for Dayton and Huffman, acting or producing and co-hosting a reality web show in Dayton. Please give a round of applause for Jason Antonick. All right, thanks. Okay, so I'm a lepidopterist. Well, what does that even mean? Well, let's find out. So this is me, 11 years old, at the Dayton Museum of Natural History. Look at that punk. So the Dayton Museum of Natural History is now called the Boonshaw Museum of Discovery. And so for many summers, I learned about the natural world there and something they had called summer lore. And I was especially fond of insect collections. And there it is, today. This collection still exists after all these years. Flies, beetles, dragonflies, wasps, but the largest group is made up of Lepidoptera, which is butterflies and moths. Most of this collection is indigenous to Ohio. Too bad we don't have giant blue morphos flying around Dayton. I would love to see that. So this here is the collections that they have still at the Boonshaft, right? So they have these collections. So, so why did I do insect collections? It seems kind of weird to uh, kill them and pin them in boxes and whatnot. But at the time, we were all junior scientists, and I was surrounded by this stuff, and I loved it. Well, what is Lepidoptera? Well, to think about Lepidoptera, we have to look at taxonomy, which is the science of classifying all living things, from the broadest form to an individual species. So kingdom, animalia, all animals. Then we look at arthropoda, which is uh, exoskeletons. Then we look at uh, insects. And then we finally get to Lepidoptera, which is butterflies and moths. So why am I passionate about that? Because of this photograph. Look at that thing. Is that not amazing? I mean, I love that stuff, right? So this black swallowtail is incredible. Seven weeks ago, it was a dot on a plant, and then halfway through, it created a tent, went inside, and came out flying. It's the biggest metamorphosis in the world. It blows me away. And so these are the little eggs. This is how it all starts with uh, black swallowtails, okay? So little eggs on dillweeds. Um, the moth eggs are very tiny. These are, cat these are butterfly eggs. Moth eggs are very tiny as well. Most eggs don't make it to adulthood. So this is one of my favorite shots of the summer. I love this picture. This is a young Cecropia moth. It has blue, yellow, and red barbed power nodes of death that line this little guy. <laughs> the host plant is sweet gum, which was a favorite of all the caterpillars that I raised this year. So if you're going to raise butterflies and moths, you have to have different kinds of containers, right? You've got multiple species at once. And these were kept on the kitchen table for a majority of the summer. Extra special thanks to you, my wife, Jessica Bertola, who is willing to share the dinner table with squishy green bugs. With very tiny insects, how do you know when they're eating? Well, when you see the poop. <laughs> I think there's a book out there that's called Everything Poops and Caterpillars Are No Different. With caterpillars, it's called frass. Large frass resembles corn on the cob. Think about that at, at your next barbecue. Here it is over here. So what, is, what we're looking at here, this is a butterfly, and butterflies form a chrysalis to form into an adult, whereas moths form pupas. The word cocoon actually refers to the silk that's encasing the pupa. Here, a black swallowtail is affixed to a branch, shed its skin, and formed a chrysalis. And here we see a newly emerged black swallowtail and three large caterpillars of the same. In the wild, black swallowtails will lay a single egg on a plant to ensure a solid food supply for the young. Newly hatched butterflies are very docile and make great photographic partners. <laughs> So this image on the top, this is a Cecropia caterpillar. It's five inches long. And the one on the bottom is a full-grown polyphemus moth caterpillar. Now look how the poly appears almost translucent. At least it did in my photos. So three to five inches on these guys. Would you hold one? OK, so pictured on the right, what we're looking at here, uh, often moths will wrap their cocoons in an extra layer of protection. And the host plant uh, is what they wrap themselves in. And then on the left, after hatching, butterflies and moths need to seek out a nice stick where they can hang upside down and then have the 
fluid in their bodies fill out their wings. Now, isn't this gorgeous? I mean, this thing yeah. blows me away. This is a full-grown polyphemus moth, pink, brown, and orange colors. It's stunning. Um, they have an impressive technique with those black spots down on the bottom, keep the predators away. They have one goal, reproduction. They do not have mouth parts. And so here it is. So the abdomen on this female on the left is huge. She is full of eggs. And so her goal is just to sit outside, release pheromones, and bring in the male. So this has happened in Dayton, Ohio. I thought, no way we're going to get a male. Very next morning, we had a male, and they were completing the cycle. Finally this year, I got to raise a species I'd never seen in the wild, the beautiful Prometheus moth. I asked my mom if she'd like to raise the Prometheus this year, and she said yes. She even snapped this awesome picture. See the little face and the yellow hat? How about that? And this is just stunning. It blew me away. I wanted to see this my whole life. I have never seen this moth in the wild, and I got to raise one. So this is the Promethea moth. Um, I didn't think it was going to hatch. Sometimes what these do is they diapause, which means that they won't hatch till next spring. And after two weeks late, they finally hatched, and I was so overjoyed. These guys, really cool, really cool. Imperial moths, hairy spots, horns, nasty. The, the grip, the back end grip, uh, super crazy. These guys all went into the ground. They burrow into the ground. They won't hatch till next year either. Finally, the mighty Cecropia that we saw earlier, largest in North America. I'm lucky enough to have one survive to form a cocoon this year. Cecropia is diapause, and so they'll hatch in the spring. And I think that the cocoon on the left kind of looks like uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers pod, 1978 movie, slightly disturbing. <laughs> However, the most important thing I can say tonight is that none of this would be possible if it weren't for my mother, and she's sitting here. She trekked me to the museum every day, packed my lunch, and encouraged me every step of the way. Happy birthday, Mom. I love you.